Hello and welcome to Chini Vision 2 for this uh, rather impromptu video in Potato Vision on the on the webcam there. Uh, is it going to focus? Perhaps it will, perhaps it won't. And sorry if you had to sit through any adverts uh, when you tuned into this. Unfortunately, Chini Vision 2 uh, is falling foul of this new YouTube thing where smaller channels under a certain level of subscribers and viewing hours and they are forced to take adverts and then YouTube steals all the money from you. That's nice, isn't it? I mean, we don't want adverts, and then we do get adverts, but we don't even get the money for it. Never mind, that's not why we're here, because tonight's the uh, 17th of September, and it was yesterday evening, 24 hours ago, the news came through that Sir Clive Sinclair had passed away, and I just wanted to... Well, I thought, should I say something? Shouldn't I say something? I thought, well, I'll just record something on Chini Vision 2, and let's see where we go, just to just to remember him, really, because he touched on all our lives, even if you didn't have a spectrum. And I was thinking, when did I first become aware of Sir Clive Sinclair? And I thought, well, he was kind of just always there, a bit like Marty Webb. Um, he was the Spectrum Man, the C5 Man, and the one for the teenagers here, the Wafer Scale Integration Man. Um, no episode of Tomorrow's World in the mid-80s was complete without a report on what would turn out to be a, a technological dead end. And no, I didn't grow up with the Spectrum. Indeed, uh, I... We got our CPC only a few months before Sinclair sold out to Amstrad. We got a commuter Christmas 85 and the takeover was April 86. But, you know, the Spectrum, you know, here's my plus here. And I thought I'd use the plus because um, everyone else can be waving around their 48K right because it's the iconic one. But this is the one I actually, the first Spectrum I owned. I bought one from a, I hesitate to use the word friend, but somebody at school for a tenner. Um, uh, uh, it didn't work, had a messed up membrane, but I managed to get it all sorted out by buying another one and getting a membrane out of that. But, you know, this is the one you get if you want to pretend you have, you know, you, you want a 128K, right? You can't afford it. So you can say, oh, look, I've got a 128K. See, look at my 128K here. Oh, just don't, don't look down the end here, but love the styling of these ones. And this is the one that means something, means the most to me, because it was the one I, I briefly had before I got my plus three. And, you know, it's this machine, or the 48K, uh, shaped the UK computer market. It was an affordable colour computer that, while often was mocked, it put computers into the hands of hundreds of thousands of teenagers, mainly mainly boys, to be honest. Uh, and fans of other machines will tell you that their machine was better. But what the Spectrum had was it was accessible. A complete Color home computer for £125 for the 16K version, uh, which was not much more than the ZX81 with its 1K of RAM, had cost at launch just a year before. £175 got you the 48K, and it was the Model T Ford of computers. Everyone could have one, and they all came in black. Jack Trammell spoke of computers for the masses, not the classes, and you have to do that in a say that in a northern way to make that work obviously um a computer for the masses not the classes doesn't work uh ironically it was clive who arguably did more for this computers for the masses not the classes mantra than jack ever did cheap computers to the point where they could often be too cheap and and while clive was always concerned with the aesthetics he never seemed so bothered about the high return rates on many of his products. Um, the word entrepreneur has been bandied around in tributes over the last 24 hours. Clive wasn't, wasn't an entrepreneur, he was an inventor. He was interested in new ideas, often to the detriment of his business. The Spectrum profits were eaten up by things like the C5, the flat screen TVs, the wafer scale integration. Uh, an entrepreneur would be making more Spectrums, which was already a success. I'm not just doing a 1 to 8K, but you know, Where's the next compatible Spectrum? Moving on up. We've got to sell more of these things because this is the thing that makes us money. But Clive didn't want to do that. What he wanted to do was create and invent. Richard Outwasser, who worked for both Amstrad and Sinclair, uh, said of him, just got the quote here, there was a great deal of interest in the way new materials and new technologies can make new components. But the detailed operation of the product and how the user would perceive it were f and what features it was going to have were far less interesting. 
I had a continual struggle with Clive to sit him down with the machine and show him what it could do and how it operated. And Altwasser went on to work for Amstrad in, in Brentwood and he said, if you just contrast this of Alan Sugar, I spent I spent hours and hours discussing the features and functions, how they are presented, and how the machine is going to be perceived by the customer. Alan doesn't get a buzz out of the technologies. And, and that's the difference. Sinclair was the, look, this is cool and new guy. Well, Sugar focused on what the lorry driver and his missus wanted and what would enable him to sell units. After Sinclair collapsed under the weight of the C5, the QL, the flat screen TVs and what have you, uh, he produced the Z88, which was another machine far too early for its time, a uh, limited success. It uh, sold, sold a few, but it didn't have that spectrum buzz. And then uh, there was a series of electric bikes that received, quite frankly, a lukewarm reception. And none of it ever seemed to have the energy of that early 80s era. It was almost like a man pottering around in early retirement, happy to tinker, but never quite getting back to where he'd been. He was a man who also seemed slightly embarrassed by the success of the Spectrum as a games computer. It wasn't why it was created, and the machine was hijacked by us lot. Uh, and it's a shame because it wasn't as black and white as being a serious computer or a games computer. It was a computer, and you could make of it what you wanted. What all the 8-bit home micros of the era did was to give you possibilities. If you just played games, fair enough. But it was just, there was more than that. You, you might learn something when you typed in a poke for Dizzy or what have you. You might get bored one day and start flicking through the manual. And, you know, okay, if 80% of people only ever played Dizzy, Horace Goes Skiing or what have you, um, if the other 20% were actually doing something, then in the sheer volumes these machines were selling, that was more useful than any modern computer or console. How many people play a PlayStation or Xbox and get any kind of coding experience or computer experience out of it? Well, you might change a hard drive in it. And even then, what's the percentage going to be? It's not the same thing. Yeah, the Spectrum was a games computer, but it sold in enough quantities and the possibilities were so big that it opened up the door to people who've got careers doing things today. People... Yeah, how many people started out on a spectrum? I'd wager, well, almost certainly more than any other format in the UK. And the media also saw things as black and white as well. Like, you know, as, as say, Sir Clive saw the games versus, you know, serious software. Even this morning, I saw a newspaper with that picture of him in the C5 on the cover. And it's being used as ever as a stick to beat him with the ridiculous man in his ridiculous electric car. Yet in the car park of that supermarket, Waitrose, I was, where I was this morning, I nearly got run down by a silent car as I didn't hear it coming. It was electric. As so often was the case, Clive had the right idea. It's just the timing and implementation was, was just a bit off. So Gini Vision salutes you to Clive. Your mad inventions, your single-minded endeavour, and the great, <laughs> and the not so great ideas you came up with. And if nothing else, if absolutely nothing else at all, the ZX80, the ZX81, and the Spectrum left a legacy of computer users that endures to this day, even if we did just play Jet Set Willy on it. Thank you.